I'm Lauren Whitehurst. I'm a certified personal trainer and certified nutrition coach. Hi, I'm Sunny Livencott. I'm a certified professional life coach and a certified brain health professional. We also have Angela Salyers, who is a licensed professional counselor, and the three of us together make up Whole, whole Life Vitality. Vitality. We teach Whole Life Vitality of the mind, body, and soul, bringing the physical, emotional, and spiritual together for whole life wellness. Welcome back, friends. Hello. Okay. Sunny, do you like being uncomfortable? <laughs> um, who doesn't? <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. Best thing ever, right? <laughs> Don't you just love being uncomfortable? Anyone that knows me, you know who you are as you're listening. Anyone that knows me knows that I handle being uncomfortable like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's, what's hilarious is that... As you can see, if you're watching, we are further away from our background yeah. than we normally are. And we sat there for at least 10 minutes in that sunshine back there, blinded by the sunshine, trying to decide if it was more uncomfortable to sit being blinded by the sunshine or to move. Look, these these chairs that we sit in, maybe you listen to this and you don't watch it. These chairs that we sit in... Um, literally like my six-year-old could pick this up they're very light very they're light easy to move none of this was particularly hard to do but <laughs> objects in motion tend to stay in motion but and objects at rest tend to stay at rest we didn't want to get up and move the two feet the, the two steps forward maybe and three feet if we're really pushing maybe it. maybe three yeah. feet forward um, to get out of the sun. And I, I was sitting there looking like Popeye um, with my one eye closed. <laughs> and Lauren finally said, mm, let's just, let's, let's just, just move. move. And then yeah. she's, you know, ironically, we're about to talk about <laughs> being Finding. comfortable with the uncomfortable. <laughs> because change happens when you are uncomfortable. Yeah. It never, ever, ever happens from a place of comfort ever. Yeah. And change itself is uncomfortable. But in order to have anything different than where you are in your moment right now at this very second, in order for anything to be different, you have to change. Yeah. And your brain hates it. Yeah. Your brain hates to be uncomfortable. It uses energy. So your brain is always, everything you're doing, it's trying to reserve energy. Yep. So it's always going to pick the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. That's how your brain works. So what will use the least amount of all of this energy that's in your body? That's what your brain is trying to do. So being uncomfortable means taking a different path than you typically take mm -hmm. and your brain is going to want to fight you on that because what it does in order to keep you safe quote unquote whenever you're doing something it's going back through all of the files in your mind and pulling from all past experiences in order to give you a projected um end to what will happen this time based on what's happened before. So it's constantly trying to tell you what might be based on what was. So if you're doing something new, if you step out and you're doing something new that you haven't done before, there's no files for it to pull from. And so it's going to say, ah, 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 red ah, alert, ah. red alert. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. You, and then you start feeling uncomfortable. You yep. start feeling a little anxious, a little nervous. It starts sending up all of these signals that say fight or flight. Don't do that because I can't tell you what will happen. We can't predict it. We can't predict this mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. So don't do this. Our number one job and our, our body's number one job is to maintain homeostasis. Right. That means it wants everything to stay status quo. And that is the safest way to, way to be because that keeps you alive. Yeah. It keeps your heart beating. It keeps, keeps your oxygen going in and out. It keeps, you know, blood flowing everywhere that it needs to go. It keeps you alive and safe. Yeah. But in order to have change, and we know logically that we can change and stay safe, but our body doesn't know that. And so we have to tell ourselves it's okay. 
it's okay. I'm going to be okay. Yes. I am feeling a bit anxious about lacing up my shoes and going for a walk this morning. Maybe I've never gone for a walk in this neighborhood. Maybe I'm taking a new path. Maybe I'm walking with a new friend. Maybe I'm just a little uncomfortable with this whole process, but logically I know it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Or I'm dealing with a lot of pain in my body. Mm -hmm. So walking seems like it'll cause more pain and that's going to, that's going to hurt. So I don't need to do it when in all actuality, you know, if you're suffering from a lot of inflammation, walking actually will help. Assuming that that your doctor has said you're safe to walk. Absolutely. Always check. Yes. Then yes, absolutely. Moving your body is so vital for your health, just moving your body in general. And if it feels hard to move your body, then you probably need to do it more often. Right. Absolutely. Um, and maybe you're one of those people who believes that you can't change, that you are who you are and that's the way that it is. This is, this is me. And I've heard that a lot. Hey, Sonny, this is me. Do you wear diapers? Um, no. Do, do you poop your pants a couple times a day? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so you can change. You can change. Because at one point you did do that. Yeah, you can grow. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I did that too. I'm pretty sure I also wore diapers at one point in my yeah. life. And here we are, fully functional human beings that know how to use the potty. Yeah. There you go. We changed. Uh, you, you can. You actually can change. And so the thing is, I... Um, growing up and I, and I think I've shared this before, but I had a fear of public speaking. Mm, Yeah. I still don't love it. Yeah. I don't wake up in the morning and I'm so passionate about getting in front of a group of people and speaking to them and having, you know, all these sets of eyes on me. That's, that's not, I'm not there. But when you're in it, that moment that you're on stage and you're in it and you're actually talking to people, how does that feel? You know, it, I don't think about it. Yep. I'm just doing it. Because when you're in the moment, it feels amazing. You're like, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm helping these people. I'm sharing this vital information. I'm living my passion. And then afterwards. Oh, you're high. You're high. Oh, it's so good. But I grew up believing that I could not speak in front of people. Mm-hmm. Um, because in school, when we had to give our reports, you know, or whatever, present, um, I would get very physically ill, Mm -hmm. uh, my stomach would turn and everyone knows without me saying what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the tummy issues or I would cry. I cried tears. So I'm dealing with gut problems in the Mm -hmm. bathroom before. And then I get up in front of people and it's not even a sad subject. Like I'm, I'm literally, you know, presenting my science project. Um, and I, I start to choke up and tears well in my eyes. And it was humiliating to me, um, that I was experiencing that. And so I shared it with my mom and my mom said, Oh, well that runs in their fam- our family. Your uncle does that. That's why he doesn't speak in front of people. And, da, da. and I was like, Oh, okay. Well that explains it. That's just my genetic makeup. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm dying here. This conversation that runs in our family. I can't control it. It's just our genetic makeup. That is the dialogue that so many people have. Yeah. And they're like, well, that's just, that's just how I am. It is what it is. It is what it is. And I'm I'm argumentative because, well, my family, that's, that's how my family is. We're argumentative people. That's just an excuse to be a jerk. Okay. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) So well said. It's just an excuse. An excuse is something that you tell yourself. It's a lie you tell yourself to feel comfortable about where you are in this moment right now. Yes. That's an excuse. Why you can't do what it is that you're supposed to do. Why you can't change, why you can't do something, why you'll never be what you want to be. It's just a lie. Yeah. Okay. So what happened is God took, God knew and, and, you know, what will make you change is when your back is against the wall yep. and you feel very passionate. Uh, you have to have passion behind change. And what happened is for the first time in my life, I lost someone that was very important to me. I'd never mm-hmm. experienced grief before. And my grandfather passed. And my grandfather, I can't talk about it too much because I will get emotional. But my grandfather was there will never be another one of my grandfathers. How about that? Um, 
loved this man with everything. And my mom asked me to speak at the funeral. Oh, that's hard. And this is someone who affected, like reached a lot of people. A lot of people were affected by my grandfather's life. And so it was not just a very small, I knew this was going to have a lot of people. And I didn't hesitate. I said, I will do it. And what happened, I had to... I had to reach real down, 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 down oh, deep. Goodness, yeah. And I started praying and I started praying for God, that God would use the Holy spirit to make my voice strong. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't praying <laughs> like, God, don't, don't make me do this. Make yeah. something happen where I don't have to do don't, this. Don't let me cry. Yeah. Don't let me, I didn't, I didn't even say those things. Don't let me cry. I said, make my voice mm-hmm. strong. Yeah. And I actually, kind of practiced what I was going to say, what I wanted to say, because I didn't want to get up there and get lost in my thoughts. And then I knew that that panic would set in and then my body would react. So I got myself prepared. You know, I really prepared myself and I, I spent that time in prayer asking God. And I got up there at my grandfather's funeral in front of hundreds of people. And it was already something that was so emotionally difficult for me anyway, um, because being reminded of the loss, you know, why Mm -hmm. my grandfather's laying there Mm. and I got through the entire thing without shedding a tear. Mm. Uh, the whole, the whole, everything that I was going to say, I got through it. And, you know, after that, as I was talking to, to God, and I, I did. I remember to thank him mm-hmm. for that. I said, here's the deal. I know that what I do is going to involve me speaking to people. I know that. And I've always believed that I can. And you just showed me that I can. So I don't make deals with God, quote unquote. But what I did say is when I am asked to speak yeah. from here on out, I will say yes. I'm going to pray that you make my voice strong. Mm -hmm. So I know that the Holy Spirit is going to be working. You do that for me. I will say yes. And hence, Mm -hmm. (laughs) since then, every time I've been asked to speak, I say yes. Because you don't get better at something by not doing it. You have to practice. And you don't grow by not being uncomfortable. Yep by not learning what it is that you're made of. It's not going to feel good, okay? People tend to think that what they're called to do and their passion, and once they figure it out, then they're just going to be so gung-ho about it and nothing's ever going to stop them and they're just going to jump every hurdle that you know comes their way with ease. And No, it's going to feel terrifying to you. It's going to make you uncomfortable. But that's what grows you. That's... The growth and being comfortable with the uncomfortable, meaning understanding that you're not doing it wrong because you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It actually means you're doing it right. If you are answering the call on your life, what you feel passionate about, how you are meant to serve others, if you're answering that and you never feel an ounce of discomfort, then you're probably not answering the right way. Have you ever lifted a weight or done a new workout or tried something new where your body had to work a little harder than it normally does? And the next day you feel some discomfort. You have some soreness. That's because in order to grow new muscle, you get little micro tears in your muscle. You break it down. You put it under stress. You cause some breakage there and it grows fresh new muscle that is stronger And you can then do more. Yeah. And that is the way that this works. You broke down. This was a hard moment for you. Yes. This was a very vulnerable moment for you. And in that space, there was massive growth. Yes. And that's how it works. We don't get better. We don't get that muscle. I can't just go and lay down in my bed and think tomorrow I'm going to have a six pack. Yeah, no, that would be mm. lovely. I cannot, mm. I, I cannot speak that into existence and do nothing. Right. I have to go through the discomfort of working my body because yeah. is it, I find it enjoyable. Honestly, I do. I find exercise enjoyable. It's what I do for a living. I think it's great, but it's uncomfortable. Well, 
And for those who have never heard our podcast before, you come from a family not of svelte, beautiful six pack figures. Right. You come from a family that was that struggles with their weight. struggles with their yeah. weight. My, I thought when I was a child that when you got older, you had babies and became obese. Yeah, that's just how it well, works. Like that's normal progression of life. And had they, you know, you believed that lie that that's your genetics. That's yeah. because look at this person mm-hmm. and look at that person. So genetically speaking, that's just what's going to happen yep. to you. Yep. What. That's, would you be sitting here right now? Well, not the same version of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, would you be helping people live healthier lives? Probably not in the same way. I mean, it would look very different. I yeah. I have lost over 85 pounds mm-hmm. because I did believe that yeah. for a minute. And I did think, oh, this is just the natural progression of things. This is how things go. And then I was like, wait a second. No. I don't have to believe that. Right. I don't have to embrace that. I don't have to say that where I am in this uncomfortable moment, unhappy with how I feel, unhappy with how I look, unhappy with how my body moves and functions. I don't have to be unhappy for my whole life. I can choose a different path. And so I did. Yes. And you can too. You can, but it's going to be uncomfortable. Oh, it was very uncomfortable and And, it took a decade. And it takes action. Mm -hmm. You can't just listen to what we talk about and expect it to change you. Yep. You can't just hear answers Mm -hmm. to questions and expect the change to just start happening in your body. Wouldn't that be so nice? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if you could only listen or read? Mm -hmm. What if you read a book and you think, okay, well, because I read it and it says this, I now know the answer. So the changes should start, you know, implementing themselves because I know the answer. Yep. Until you apply it, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to make yourself uncomfortable. So it may mean that... Okay, you have dealt with brain fog for a really long time, and you have read the studies on how bad sodas are for you. If and and this goes for any kind of added soda, maybe not like sparkling water soda, but like high fructose corn syrup, so hard on your brain. Right. All those colors, all those dyes, so hard on your brain. Artificial sweeteners, so hard on your brain. Yeah, and you realize, okay, well, I know it. But knowing it's not going to help you. Yeah. So what do you have to start doing? You're going to have to start fighting that addiction. And it's going to be uncomfortable. And you're going to feel the effects of that. But little by little, you really see what you're made of. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's a phone addiction. you know. And you think, I've actually heard people say, well, I can't. I can't live without my phone. I can't. You know, I can't. I can't give up social media. That's great for you, but I can't do it. Yeah. Well, if you have that mentality, then you can't. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. But you can. Mm -hmm. You can do anything. You can do anything. But it's going to involve you filling that time with something else. It's not just eradicating it from your life. It's replacing it Mm -hmm. with something else that's going to feel uncomfortable. Okay. So for me, you know, I had to replace that, that thought process of in that understanding that I can't change with a new thought process of I can do this and mm-hmm. I want to do this. And it involved me praying for a strong voice. And it involved me taking time on getting clear about what I wanted to say and then actually practicing what I wanted to say. Yeah. And then after that, talking and making that decision, talking with God, making that decision, I'm going to say yes. And then now I have to keep my end of the bargain. And when those, and they have, they have, when those speaking, you know, engagements have come up, saying yes, and then preparing. I don't just get up there and say, okay, God, give it to me, make my voice strong. I want, no, it's actually preparing for what I wanted to say. Yeah. And, you know, spending that time in prayer, making myself uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And actually providing it with action. So whatever it is that you're going through, understand that it's not going to just change because you've read it or you've heard it or you're like, yeah, I need to do that. 
you actually are going to have to put action behind that and force yourself to be uncomfortable until you do it so often that it becomes habitual, that it becomes habitual, mm-hmm. becomes comfortable mm-hmm. because that first run is going to be miserable. It's going to suck mm-hmm. and you're going to hate it. But your 100th run going to be a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier. Uh, the first time you speak, it's going to be uncomfortable. And you're going to hate it. Yep. But the hundredth time you've done it, it's going to sound a lot better. Uh, the first time we did a podcast. It was very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. Extremely nervous. I was very nervous. I had notes out. I could yeah. feel my hands oh, shaking yeah. as Vibrating I was doing it. head to toe. Um, I had that stress sweat. You know what I'm talking about. You know the stress sweat. Oh, yeah. Stress sweat is the worst. Because it's. It's sweaty, but it's cold, and then you smell and you so smell bad. Afterwards. So bad. So I had, and I wore like a um, a blazer. I think I sweat right through that <laughs> dang blazer, man. Like seriously. Uh, but now we are like fifty so podcasts get, get in there. I think we're mid forties, but yeah. yeah, we're definitely getting closer. And it feels now. Are we? By any way, would you like talk to us and we say, oh, yeah, we are experts. at No, no. And it's going to look a a whole lot different as we do 50 more. Mm -hmm. But it feels so much different now than it did. And we had to force ourselves to be uncomfortable. We knew what we wanted, but we could have said, well, we don't know how to do that. And we don't have the followers that this podcast has. And so, you know, we just, we don't know what we're doing. No, what we did is we contacted people who did know how to do this. And we talked with them and asked them, hey, what all do we need? We purchased the things that we needed. Lauren has spent countless hours YouTubing and learning how all of this works and she spends hours, you know, putting it all together and preparing it. And here we are. We learn a little more every day. We're doing it. Sunny, did you know that I was a diet Coke addict? Oh, me too. Were you really? Yes. Yes. You know, what's crazy about that. I remember at one point my sister and I were in the car and you would have thought that it was a paid ad. I'm not even kidding you. We're both sitting there with our giant fountain drinks of diet coke giant i mean mm-hmm. easily 32 ounces right and go into town on them back and forth and she's like diet coke is so amazing i was like i know it's so great and the stuff we were saying about diet coke it was like it was a love song i'm yeah. not even kidding you yeah put it in that uh styrofoam cup with yes. the pebble ice yes yes it might it was probably even sonic honestly yeah if, if i'm being really it, it was a whole experience really, man yeah. so we went back and forth and back and forth. And I'm sitting here thinking, I haven't had a Diet Coke in over a decade mm-hmm. because I decided to make changes for myself, mm-hmm. right? And that was one of the things that was changing. And it was hard. Mm-hmm. And I had this amazing Diet Coke community. Yeah. And that was also part of what made it hard. Yeah. Because this dialogue that I've had with my friends and my family about the amazingness of Diet Coke and this feelings that we shared about it, we didn't have any more that change and that was uncomfortable. Yeah. So it wasn't just a, the taste, it was the whole experience. So now I have a different community. I mean, yes, yeah. I still love those people, but I have a community that supports something different. So as you're looking to change, as you're growing and working through that discomfort, community makes all the difference. Oh, that's, and, and that's what's so great about coaching is that, you know, through coaching, you, you have people that come to you because they want to make a change, but they're just on their own. Yeah. The desire isn't, it's not backed so much that they're actually putting action towards it and Mm -hmm. they need accountability. And that's what coaching offers is that we make a plan together and then you offer that accountability to them and they they leave and they say, okay, I have a plan. I have someone here who's keeping me accountable. So that desire, you know, it increases and that pushes that action, you know, yep. it pushes them to take action. So a lot of the times, you know, when, when deciding to make a change, it's going to be very difficult, especially if you're doing something that causes you shame and you, 
you know, you, you tend to hide that thing. Hi, my name's Lauren and I was a Diet Coke holic. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, you, you binge Netflix, you know, and you're like, oh, I just can't wait to get home and get my show. And, uh, or you're, you know, social media, you're on social media mm-hmm. and your phone tells you, you were on social media yesterday for 10 hours and you don't want to share that with someone. Mm-hmm. Listen, Anything that you feel like has more control of you than you have of it it's time to start questioning that. It's time to start putting that in its proper place because who's really in charge here? Right. Really. Like you get to choose how you spend your life, what that life looks like. You get to choose. And if where you are right now is not what you would choose, is not what you want for future you. I ask my kids all the time. I'm like, what are you going to do? Well, I want to do this. Okay. Is that serving current Julius, or is that serving future Julius? And what is future Julius going to say about that? And he didn't, he wanted to use a homework pass for something. And I said, okay, but do you want to use it for this? Or do you want to save it for something else? And he goes, well, okay, I think I'm going to serve future Julius. And I was like, okay, you do that. And he, but you had that, he had that help. Yeah. And so there are some things when, when talking about being uncomfortable that you're going to have to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to, you know, step outside of yourself and stop listening to the voice that says, this is who I am and I can't change and ask for help. Ask for accountability. Ask that person to listen to you and share what you would actually like your life to look like and get the help that you need. I needed help. Absolutely. Anytime you're making a big change, It's so, it makes all the difference in the world to have help, to have accountability, to have community, to have someone who can support you in that process. Absolutely. And even, even addictions, Mm -hmm. addictions, they can be helped. Um, Lauren and I, we are, uh, eating disorder, anorexia, eating disorder survivors. Uh, we had to get help. I had to get help. That was not something that I could just say, okay, I'm going to start taking care of myself. I'm going to eat now. I had to work through what was keeping me from feeding my body and Mm -hmm. fueling my body. And I had to share that. I had to, you know, share it with my husband and I had to get accountability and I had to go get help. I had to get, you know, actual professional help for that. And, uh, I needed, I needed to help. I needed help with God. Like I I had to take it to God and there was a whole lot of things that I had to implement in my life and I had to believe that it was possible. So dietary changes, I had to get on a food plan. I had to get an accountability. I had to tell those closest to me, you know, so that there was assurance there that I was eating, you know, and I had to be honest with God and I had to believe, you know, have a belief there that I could get better and, I did. And I did what was asked of me and it was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It was, it was hard and it was uncomfortable. And not something you wanted to do. No, no, no. But I think not eating was actually, would have actually been easier. Because Uh, as in dealing with an addiction, you want to continue doing what you're doing. Right. But that's why you take yourself out of this moment that you're in and look to future you and what do you want for future you? If you could dream, if you could see what you want, do you want to always be captive to this particular struggle for the rest of your life? Yeah. So it's being comfortable with the uncomfortable Mm -hmm. is going to be small at first. Please understand that. You do not look for the perfected view Uh, It's going to implement small changes. So when making those changes, please understand that the goal should be that it becomes a habit first, that you're implementing the changes first before you try to make it look perfect. Okay. Um, Really important. I didn't go from crying and not being able to speak in front of people and then set my goal to speak in front of a women's conference of thousands of women. Mm -hmm. It involves me speaking first to a group of five. You know, I had to start small, Mm -hmm. um, then going live on social media, you know, uh, recording videos and posting them and then, you know, speaking in front of a larger group and then speaking in front of a group larger than that. So it's very small, small incremental changes that Mm -hmm. make a 
big lasting impression in your life. Um, so ask for help, but understand it's going to feel uncomfortable. Your brain is going to be like, Whoa, no. (laughs) Yes, exactly. You're doing it right. You're doing it right. You are supposed to be uncomfortable. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to feel different and Mm -hmm. new, and you're going to question whether or not that you can do it and whether you're doing it right. Those are all normal results of change. I get messages from clients almost every single day saying, this is happening. Is this normal? Yes. This is happening. Is this normal? And I'm like, yes, that's all all within the realm of normal because you're changing because you're doing something different than you were doing before. But I get those messages and I reply to those messages and I reassure them. And that's what you get when you coach. Yeah. Because you get, like you were saying, a plan, you get guidance and then you get support. Yeah. As you're making those changes and the little baby steps that help you get closer to your goal. So if you don't know what your goal is, if you don't know what that discomfort is or how to get out of it, reach out. Let's talk. Yeah. We are here. We can help you with that plan, whether it is mindset, whether it is physical, whether it is emotional, whether it is somewhere in between, you know, we do the whole mind, body, soul thing. We got it all covered here. Yeah. So you just let us know what it is that you're working through or what it is that you're feeling uncomfortable in and we'll do it. Yeah. We're here for you. Mm -hmm. It'll be great. Well, Sunny, thank you. Yeah. That was fantastic. That was great. I mean, did you hear how well she did speaking in front of people? <laughs> this girl has come a long way. That well, was fantastic. Thanks. I didn't cry. She didn't cry. You know, she didn't poop her pants either. I didn't. So, I didn't. Winning. I'm 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 just winning today. <laughs> winning so much. So much. And look, if the sun didn't follow me, yeah, look, see? see, it's good we're ending here. That's right. Because it has hints moved come all the way around come all the way around that's right (laughs) make sure that you like subscribe follow check us out on all of our social media platforms you don't want to miss anything yeah you don't we post every single day we have podcasts up here a couple times a week we love sharing with you we love hearing from you make sure to reach out whether it be through a direct message or a comment or send us an email email uh, we're at wholelifevitality.com. So that would be either sunny at wholelifevitality.com or Lauren at wholelifevitality.com. You can find us. Yeah. Easy peasy. Any questions, whatever. It's, listen, if you, you know, we will keep it, you know, we're not going to call you out. So if you have a question, just ask the question. We will answer the question. We'll address the question. You don't have to worry about us embarrassing you online. There's nothing at this point that we have not heard, um, truly. So truly, I have had long text conversations, not to bring it back about poop in our pants, but for real about poop long. I, we, there's no such thing as TMI here. No. Like we have heard it. We have seen it. We're 40 all. year old women. We, That's right. We, we've been there. Been through it We all. know it. Yes. Uh, so ask anything, you know, yep. we're, we're here for you. We want to help um, in any way, any capacity that we can. And so. as coaches, if we don't know the answer, we can also help direct you to someone yes. who can help you. Absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for showing up today for doing this life along with us. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Go be uncomfortable. That's right. (laughs) Bye friends.